Is this the start of an active period to close out the 2025 hurricane season? What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. Tropical storm Gabrielle formed today. We're going to forecast that in two other waves of the hurricane center is highlighted. I'd like to know your thoughts on the long range. Post those comments in the comment section. We're going to get to it. Here is Gabrielle. It formed early today. It is a very ugly and battered-looking storm. It's barely a tropical system now. You see the spinny icon there. The thunderstorms with it are on the northern side, but it's all elongated, stretched out. Look at where the thunderstorms still extend, way down here, too. So the thing is just very, very unorganized tonight. It actually looked better last night at 11 o'clock. Nonetheless, it became a depression. It got a name because winds are above uh, 40 miles an hour or 39 miles an hour, reaching 40. It's at a 50 maximum sustained right now. And you see it clearly makes the turn northeast of the Caribbean. So for my friends there, check. We're good to go. And we're looking for a close brush with Bermuda. Everything that I'm showing, and I'll show you the models as well, so you can see for yourself what I'm looking at, that it bends it away from Bermuda. We're in the cone, so certainly something to pay attention to. Nonetheless, I think it's going to go east. Uh, maximum stain winds with this at 50 miles an hour. It is expected to become a hurricane. However... Some models do drop this thing out completely, and it's going to be another thing to watch. Is this going to be a gaff similar to what 91L was? That's going to be the question. The one thing that looks pretty clear is that in the short term, this is going to struggle. Gabby is going to struggle. Gabrielle. I call it Gabby, that we're on a we're on a first name basis, nickname basis. But here we go. There's the thunderstorms trying to blossom around the center. But look at all the orange around it. The green is the moisture. The brown is the drier air being ingested right on into the open center. And then it also has this thing, this upper level trough. You see that kind of counterclockwise spiral right there? That upper trough right there is going to induce some wind shear. And it's also helping to pump Gabrielle with some drier air. So in the short term, and as forecast by the National Hurricane Center, it is going to struggle. Before we get into some modeling, because I have the ensembles pulled up, I want to show you the two trailing waves, and both have a low shot. If you can look clearly here, there's actually two yellow blobs, if you will, drawn by the National Hurricane Center. There's a top one, and then there's kind of that secondary lip right there. Both of these entities, the one that's hanging by the Cabo Verde Islands, moving to the west, and then this juicy thing getting ready to slide off Africa as we speak. It looks menacing. It looks like it's impressive. There's not much model or ensemble support with it. And for that, I do want to show you some of the ensembles. So this is going to be the European ensembles, and there's not much going on. Let me bust out the telestrator so we can highlight some things. Uh, some of the European ensembles get that second wave kind of out in here, the third wave. That's the one that's over Africa now. Very weak. Uh, the second wave kind of gets up here, and then this is Gabrielle, okay? So there's not much going on on that front. The one thing that I'm going to point out in all the three ensemble things that I'm going to show you is we don't like this, okay? This is what we've advertised for weeks now, that we're going to have to watch the Central American Gyre area, MJO coming into place, and that's going to have to pump up some thunderstorms. So we have indications now of some models uh, ensemble support in that September 27th time frame. So this is as we round out September and get into October. So that was the European ensembles. This is the GFS ensembles. Uh, most of them don't even, I mean, we're talking about hardly any development out of anything. Also curving Gabrielle, that's those lines up there. I know this is kind of convoluted. But the one thing that it's also hinting at, and this is through September 27th as well, something in the Bay of Campeche trying to lift up. When I tell you we don't want anything in the Gulf right now because of the water temperature, we don't want anything in the Gulf right now. So anything that kind of pops up, any kind of limited support has my attention because this is probably the best environment, unfortunately, for storms, the main development region, we've seen this story time and time again. It's been good for the entire season, but we're about to get out of the main development region uh, season anyway, the Cabo Verde season. So that was the GFS, and now here's the Google DeepMind AI. 
some of the AI models have been bullish, and I caution using the AI models to initialize storm threats first and foremost. The Google DeepMind AI, before I get into my spiel, here we go. Gabby's up here. Gabrielle, sorry. Um, and the other waves just like don't like peter out. So the Google DeepMind AI is not bullish on those two waves that the Hurricane Center has highlighted by any means. But what they do have is the Western Caribbean Southern Gulf again with something lifting up north. This is going to be September 30th. So this is in that same ballpark as what the Euro ensembles and the GFS ensembles both show. So it starts to raise the antenna a little bit. And then you look deeper, and we have that MJO passage to help to force it. So you never take what the model's saying. You need to dig deeper. That's why we like to call ourselves sometimes, at least myself, an atmospheric detective. The guidance, the atmosphere give us clues. Now we need to go figure it out. So that's what it's showing there. But I caution using some of the AI models, which have been bullish, because there's a lot of, okay, what has happened in the past to predict the future? Yes, I know it's using real-time data, of course, ingested in there. And then it's taking that data and be like, okay, what has happened in the past? So when it's database, if it sees something that kind of matches up and we're getting into the climatological period anyway, that we are kind of watching for this area, it might, hey, it's late September. We have this environment. Let, let's pump up a storm right here. So I caution using the AI models at this point because I think they're going to be heavily infused with, well, they are heavily infused with what's happened in the past. Nonetheless, we have the Google DeepMind AI online, Euro and GFS online for something over there. The main development region stuff, it's just going to have a hard time connecting because it's now September and October. It needs to get right in a real setup for something to push it back in from west to east. Okay, so I want to get you back to the other weather computer now because what the, what I want to show you is kind of where we stand. So obviously, we're below normal at this point. Who knows if we're going to see an average season? I don't know. Um, storms just aren't staying together. I mean, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. I, ho I hope we end it right where we're at right now. Uh, for perspective, the forecast in May, 13 to 19 storms. This is the NOAA forecast, National Hurricane Center. Six to 10 of those becoming hurricanes, three to five becoming major. We're obviously way off a of pace off the forecast. And I want to, you know, go on a rant. It's, it's, not to, it's not an agenda thing. I promise you that. It's not of, it, it's nothing like that. It's been another really weird season that research is going to be needed as to why the main development region just couldn't support a storm in the peak of hurricane season. It's crazy. Stability is a major factor, but why is it so stable? And there's a couple of reasons for that, but one of them is likely because the earth has gotten so warm. The average for the entire season, which runs through November 30th, 14, 7, and 3. Will we get that? I don't know. It's going to be wild. Remember, from September 24th on, we set a record for a number of named storms last year. I think there were uh, 11 with seven hurricanes. So hopefully we don't go above average in the last, like, four to five weeks of the active period of hurricane season. All righty, guys, I'd like to know your thoughts. Again, there's nothing imminent out there hitting land. But there are some signals that once we get to the end of September, like we've said since about May, maybe June, will probably pop off the second uh, through the second week of October. Post in the comments what you're thinking. I'd love to know if you made it this far. I'd love you to hang out with us more often. Consider hitting that subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time.